At a time when our country is in turmoil, many are crying out for leadership. As we face a crucial general election, she presents not just herself, but her years of experience and ideas to the nation. She's not alone. On her side is the strongest, smartest, and diverse team that's ready to lead a brighter tomorrow. Now is the time to get it right with the brightest candidates, a tested master plan, and most of all, a progressive political party, the United National Congress. It's with great honor to present to the nation and the thousands online, on air, and around the world, the clear choice for Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. On the ballot now, Senior Counsel, Kamla Prasad Bissessa. everyone here we are again with you and we thank you for joining us in this virtual meeting we will be holding many more of these meetings because tomorrow is a very important day and the days that follow are even more important as we journey on our way to victory on August 10th tomorrow is nomination day a few hours away when our candidates will have their papers vetted and filed to contest the election so few hours for nomination day I address you and I have a message of great hope for you I am convinced that the UNC will win the election on August 10th I can feel it I can taste it I can see it and on the ground it is the same everywhere we go the entire country has gone yellow I'm confident that our team candidates and non-candidates alike we have a very strong team I want to thank our former minister, Kevin, who joined us tonight, and the candidates who spoke. We have a team of experienced people. We have a team of younger people. And so we will have that mix of young and not so young to take us forward on this journey to reclaim Trinidad and Tobago and, of course, to stop the slide that we have been experiencing. I know that some people are concerned and in fact, the, the, the black man on the other side talked about um, kindergarten. What a great disservice and disrespect to the young people of this country. So as a team, is a kindergarten team. Well, look, I prefer have this team of young people than the geriatrics you have. Because the same things that you have done and not done for five years, you have brought them all back to do nothing, blank again, for another five years. We must get new people. We must blood new ones. And we also have the ones who are experienced who have been there. So Kevin, thank you, and all the others who have remained loyal team, loyal team UNC, we thank you. We have built our campaign on sound and reasonable plans. I've told you we have smart objectives. We have smart targets. And these plans will give us over 50,000 new jobs. On Saturday, we will meet again as we present our candidates. And on Saturday, I'll tell you a little more about how we save jobs that have been lost and bring those jobs back. So our plan tonight I'm sharing with you is how to create 50,000 new jobs. But in addition to that, we will have to help those businesses and small businesses who have suffered, have let their workers go. We'll have to help them to recreate the jobs that have been lost. So the new jobs as well as the older jobs that have been lost that we will work with the private sector to bring those jobs back. I want to spend a little time talking about what is considered strong leadership. Strong leaders govern, yes, with compassion, but weak leaders govern through fear. Strong leaders govern through the heart, Weak leaders govern through fear. I'll give you, stop for a minute and just think. When you see Keith Rowley, if you see Keith Rowley there, and you see Kamala there, which one you think you could just walk up and say hello to? Which one will you be not afraid of? I think you know the answer to that. Because of the arrogance, because of the abuse that the strong man, who thinks he's a strong man, who is really a dictator. Be honest with yourself. 
to answer that question. One of the problems that people face, populations face, has always been with leadership, where there's a tendency for the emergence of callous, strongman leaders. They pass themselves as heroes, they're strong, they're brave, bold. Yes, they use well-established tactics of stimulating fear in people to manip manipulate citizens, to implement, divide and rule, putting citizen against citizen. These tactics include gr group differences, contamination and threat, accentuating the importance and benefits of self-interest rather than the interests of the common good. And all the while, they falsely offer themselves as strong leaders to defend and support you as an individual in their group. I want to give you two examples of this callous strongman manipulation, masking itself as strong leadership. While the majority of countries in the Caribbean and in the world are finding ways to bring their citizens back home, your nationals back home, they have found every reason not to bring our nationals back to Trinidad and Tobago. To cover their incompetence, they resort to divide and rule strongman tactics, and they put the nationals here, pitting you here against our nationals abroad. So they'll be protecting you, so the rest of them, you could stay out. They use the line, I am paying the price for protecting the population. Paying the price, but the price you will pay is on August 10th, we will vote you out. We have to go, Rowley has to go. He says, I am paying the price for protecting the population. Do what? To stir up sympathy in the population for himself. He's always playing the victim, we know that. And then at the same time, he's ruling, he's making these words to create fear in your hearts. They say, listen, I'm protecting you from COVID death. But in the meantime, people are dying. Those nationals are stranded abroad in more ways than one. And so, he makes us see our citizens stranded abroad as outsiders and uses this to stop hate and resentment for those who are here at home. That is the same principle of manipulation that he uses to cover the fact he never had a plan besides closing the borders. And what did he do? The strong man. What did he do? He closed the borders. Isn't that what everybody did? Isn't that what the WHO guidelines said? Look, close your borders. In fact, I call for the closure of the borders. If you recall, after the first death, I mentioned it before. And you close the borders. I want to thank the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago who followed the WHO guidelines, and they are the ones who have kept us safe. Not Rowley. Has no plan to bring our nationals home when everywhere else nationals have been brought back home. Shame on you, Mr. Prime Minister. Shame on you. That is your strong man. So you want to use this COVID to the hilt to show that you protected the citizens. The people of Trinidad and Tobago protected themselves by following the world guidelines. Blame, bully, berate, belittle. That is the behavior of a weak leader. A strong leader has compassion, love, and kindness to bring citizens united together. For those of you who sit on the fence and ignore this tyrant strongman behavior, I want to ask yourself a question. When he attacks and turns you into the next victim, like he did to so many others, and make you the villain outside of his little group and mob. What will you do? Today is Gabriel Farrier. Yesterday it was uh, the economist. The day before was religious leaders. It is always someone else that he blames and bullies to create distancing, not social, to turn one group as against the other. You see, their only plan is to attack people because they have no idea how to generate any sort of income to improve your lives. The only thing they know is tax, 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 borrow, 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 and spend, spend, spend. Online tax, tire tax, can you imagine a tire tax? You don't even have proper roads to drive on, you have to pay a tax for the tire to drive on the bad roads. Corporate taxes increased, value added tax, property tax, and by the way, if you make that mistake on August 10th, they bring back that property tax. Huh? Property tax, everything is a tax. I've always said you cannot tax an economy into prosperity. As a British Prime Minister once said, and I quote, for a nation to tax itself into prosperity, it is like a man standing in a bucket and trying to lift himself up by the handle of the bucket. You cannot tax a nation into prosperity. It's not possible. How much more can people take? Yes, we must get revenue, but there are other ways 
to um, create revenue streams. We have a plan to do just that, not the tax, 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 tax. The next UNC government will not subject our citizens to punishment over taxation and through taxation, over taxation. We will work to put money in your pockets so you bring hope and success back to your lives. And how will we do this? We will lower taxes. I repeat, we will lower taxes, corporate taxes, and personal income taxes. And of course, we will take off the fat again on food items, as we did before, over 7,000 food items. We had removed the fat, which they put it back on, and then tell you, you have less fat to pay. So we will lower the taxes. And by doing that, this would enable each and every citizen to be able to invest in the way of life they deserve. By reducing taxes on small businesses, will open the way for thousands of jobs to be created and thereby put even more money in the pockets of our citizens. By reducing taxes for businesses, we would encourage investment, increase competitiveness, and allow for the expansion of business operations. We will remove the nuisance tax, that is the online purchase tax. We will remove the online purchase tax. All that is done is added to the burden that small businesses and micro businesses face in obtaining supplies. The UNC wants to make things easier for businesses to thrive. And in the current climate of this global pandemic, it is more critical that we create the environment for businesses to strive. When they strive, the population does well, the jobs are created, and there is a better quality and quantity in terms of a livelihood under such a regime. We will not proceed with the PNM's poorly thought out revenue authority. So it's tax, 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 borrow, 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 spend, spend, spend. So they want a revenue authority. In the law, in that revenue authority, they want to put a minister of finance as a man picking who is going in that revenue authority because they really want to get into your business. Their whole thing is to get into your private business. We rejected that revenue authority, and a UNC government will not proceed with a revenue authority. Then what will we do? We will increase the efficiency of the Board of Inland Revenue and Customs and Excise instead of creating this new hybrid entity, which in my view is unconstitutional, that revenue authority. And so we will raise billions more in revenue per year when we strengthen the BIR and the Customs and Excise Division. We also have some plans for developing our digital economy. And I'll spend at the moment talking about our digital economy digital plans for our economy. One is app development investment program. Over the past five years, absolutely nothing has been done to diversify our economy. We intend to address this when we get into office by implementing a number of strategies. You know, every one person in your lifetime has had a million dollar idea. Everyone has had a great idea, but probably never got off the ground mainly because of lack of funding. Today, in the digital age, there are tremendous opportunities in business to develop apps, which people can download on their devices like this, the mobile devices. These apps cost very little money, relatively, and they can earn significant revenues. Let me remind you, the Uber app, for example, costs about 100,000 US dollars to develop. Do you know how much it's worth today? Today, it is worth 30 billion US dollars that Uber app. Our entire national budget is just seven billion US dollars. Candy Crush was developed for a cost of 30,000. It is now worth 946 million US dollars. In TNT, we do have an overwhelming number of bright tech savvy young people full of ideas. We intend to harness their energy and their entrepreneurial spirit by launching an app development program which will be open to all our citizens, young people, regardless of race, religion, color, social, or economic position. To execute this program, we intend to partner with an independent organization. So how will it work? Young people from all walks of life will be invited to pitch their ideas to a panel. A panel will evaluate their proposals and then make recommendations. The panel will evaluate and make recommendations. We will then act as angel investors, that is a government, a UNC government, and we will fund the development of the selected apps. For our investment, government will retain 49% of shareholding in what could turn out to be the next Facebook 
or ways and other such uh, great projects that have come to pass in this digital age. So all we need for, is for one, just even one of these apps to hit big and we'll cover all our investments, taking a giant step towards diversifying the economy and at the same time earning significant foreign exchange, earning significant revenue to fund our other projects. In addition, we have a plan for a biotechnology, um, using biotechnology businesses to grow the economy, to create jobs, and of course, uh, create revenue streams and earn foreign exchange. We have, our country has a lot that we are, um, have great comparative advantages in. As I've said, it's not just sun, sea, and sand. We can find that in many other places. So this, this thing about um, sun, sea, and sand tourism, yes, we will not discourage it, but there is so much more we can do. We have a unique comparative advantage that we can leverage growing global demand in biotechnology businesses. So what does this mean? A new UNC government will be committed to the following initiatives to develop biotechnology business. One, we will increase biotechnology research and development funding. We'll provide the required R&D funding for biotechnology research, and we will develop um, and development to the cluster of tertiary education institutions located mainly in St. Augustine. Of course, we have talked about St. Augustine as being the, um, the education city of Trinidad and Tobago. But of course, we have one not too far from here. A UNC government will open the UWI South Campus, which is as a short distance from where we are, so that we will increase the number of tertiary places available to Trinidad and Tobago citizens as well as to the CARICOM, which will also bring us more foreign exchange. Secondly, we will establish a national venture capital fund to promote biotechnology startups. Thirdly, we will set up biotechnology, bioresearch launch pads. We will set up bioresearch launch pads. These, this will provide a platform for local natural and applied scientists to access regional and global ideas and opportunities. Four, we will establish the East-West Biotechnology Manufacturing Corridor. Manufacturing. You know, someone told me, um, when you come off the beat and you're along the corridor there, there used to be a lot of businesses operating, which meant a lot of jobs, all those have just gone away. We have to create a biotechnology manufacturing corridor, east-west uh, manufacturing corridor in biotechnology. So what will we do? We will invite private investors to establish a biotechnology manufacturing zone along the east-west corridor to create jobs. This corridor will attract entrepreneurs and firms, both local and international. And so we'll create a cluster of industrial applications in agro, health, and wellness, and industrial and environmental biotechnology. Such areas could include therapeutic, exotic livestock development, integrated aquaculture systems, biopesticides, crop genetic improvement, aging medicine, I think many of us could benefit from that, aging medicine, and bioinformatics and environmental conservation. This is our East-West Corridor Biotechnology Manufacturing Corridor. To do what? To create jobs, to grow the economy. And the more jobs we create, yes, we'll get some taxes from that too. But we will not be raising the taxes to such inordinate levels. Imagine a man goes on national TV. He said we raise the price of gas three times. And <laughs> you remember that? They haven't arrived yet. They arrived yet. A minister of government could sit in with foreigners. There was an international audience there and sit in this big chair and laugh at the people of Trinidad and Tobago because he raised the price of gas three times. Minister, on August 10th, you will also be gone. With these initiatives I mentioned for the biotechnology corridor, we intend to create over 5,000 new jobs just with that biotechnology um, corridor. And we will create these 5,000 new jobs we will be able to obtain almost US $1.5 billion in FDI inflows. What's FDI? Foreign direct investment. In the almost five years of this Rowley government, this failing competent government, not one cent of foreign direct investment has come into Trinidad and Tobago. What have we had instead? We've had reverse, negative, reverse, minus, minus, minus. Not just at ground zero, minus, which means FDI, 
is moving away from Shraddha. I think Kevin would have told you the plant, the Mitsubishi plant, thanks to the government I led and thanks to former Minister of Energy, that plant created thousands of jobs whilst it was in construction. And then, of course, now this open will bring foreign exchange to Trinidad and Tobago, thanks to the government I led. And I want you to remember something. Huh? We must work to rebuild our nation. We must work to secure a brighter, more prosperous future for our children and the generations to come. It's not just about today. This is about our children tomorrow and their children thereafter. Rowley and the PNM want us to forget the past five years. Ago. All they want you to do is to think about COVID, and I'll talk a little bit about that. The whole campaign is, oh, boy, be this so good. Well done, Rowley. Well done. I handled this thing so great, this COVID. They want us to forget for five years. You were there. You were governing. The economy has collapsed, and people are suffering. Never forget, under this Rowley regime, about 100,000 jobs have been lost. Over 100,000 jobs have been lost. Never forget, this is the same man who stood on a public platform with national TV giving him coverage. And he says the government is not closing down Petrotrain. And in case you didn't hear me and you were opening the fridge door, closing the fridge door, the government is not closing down Petrotrain. And lo and behold, just mere weeks later, Petrotrain shut down and all, 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 all gone. Kevin has spoke to you about retirees from Petrotrain and some of the plans we have with respect to them. Never forget, this is the same man. When uh, the same Petrotrainer, you remember fake oil? He said yes. The man called him. He called the man. He never called his Minister of um, Energy. He never called the Petrotrain board. When my story broke of the fake oil, he called his best friend, his bestie, as we say. Never forget that. And so, I want you to understand that our plans to create these jobs, there will be a space and a place for everyone. There's a space and a place for everyone in the house of the rising sun. August 10th is fast approaching. We are ready to return good governance to Trinidad and Tobago. And in this election, of course, you have a choice. There is a clear choice. Forget the small parties. It's a democratic right. They put their names. I don't think they're going to interfere with the votes Naked will get into Napuna or the votes that um, anybody else is getting. I've just seen Naked here, JJ getting in La Hoketa. It's not going to affect any of that. So just concentrate on who is the real political rival. The choice is clear. It is Rowley or Kamala. That is your choice come August 10th. And you have to make that decision. I will tell you something. Eh? Let me describe someone for you. And when you hear it, tell me who comes to your mind. This man is an aggressive tyrant, always attacking always berating, always bullying and blaming everyone but himself. He has attacked school children. Remember hyenas in a, wherever he said the school children, hyenas in, a, in an African jungle. He said that about our school children. He has attacked women. He has attacked the police. He has attacked the judiciary. He has attacked business leaders. He has attacked religious heads. And of course he has attacked the media. And his attacks are so vicious that he even turn on his own leaders and his own party. And they say, if you don't know who I'm talking about, fill in the blanks. I don't have to name that man. You fill in the blanks. You could fill them in. And talking about blanks, what has blank done for Trinidad and Tobago for the past almost five years? What has he done? Almost five years. What has blank done for you as a citizen? I could answer that. Not a blanking thing. He's not done a single blanking thing, Mr. Blank. So, if he's blanking you, what will you do come August 10th? Let us blank him out of office on August 10th and vote UNC. I want to show you a little video, if Kivan can run it. Take a look at their screen, please. <laughs> Make sure the talk is done now. Time to start back the work now. All the talk done, all the talk done. Work nation!
Anytime and every time. That's what I put up on the screen for you. We deliver the laptops, we build roads, bridges, schools, hospitals, police stations. They used to call us the box rain government. Do you remember that? I know a lot of people now will be very happy to get a box rain where there's flooding. We helped with that to ease the flooding. So much we did in that five years we were there. I asked you again, what has Black done in the five years they've been there? Only thing they seem bent on doing is blame Kamala. If it rains, blame Kamala. If it's dry, blame Kamala. Everything it is. But when it's one of our projects they are turning the key for, they blank us out and take the credit. Let's remember that. Arima Hospital, who built it? The People's Partnership. Point Fortin Hospital, the Mitsubishi plant. These are just some of the things that they are now claiming they did when they did nothing at all. So someone asked me tonight before we came, you know, what are our chances to win this election? I want to, to make a little joke with you. you know, I swear, I swear, if I could have picked any politician in any election, any time, from Williams to Chambers to Manning to Blank, I would pick Keith Blank any time. Any, any time. The choice is clear, Kamala or Keith. You know, I, I think people, I really feel sorry you now in a way, I, you know, I, I know there are a lot of people grieving for Mr. Vannon. He was always a decent gentleman. We fought on political grounds. And he has been replaced by Mr. Blank. I will pick Blank any day to give him a licking of his life on August 10th. Sir. So, this man has to be the biggest non-performer in our nation's history. I ask again, what has he done for you in the five years? Forget the old talk, what has it done for you? Think about it. What has it done for you, Archie? Think about it. And so, he makes a name for himself with the ferry fiasco. Yes, we remember him for that. He makes a name for himself with the ins and outs and the doubts and the shouts about Marley McDonald. He makes a name for himself by recording the highest unemployment numbers in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. That's what he's done. And we must not forget the things that he did. He makes a name for himself. You know what? by selling out Petrotrin and yet refusing to tell you who is behind it and you have to ask about it as I did before wait again didn't this just happen like that fake oil came and went and then you shut down the whole of Petrotrin where are those documents for investigation you shut it down and then you put your friend your personal lawyer in charge so he's going around telling everyone I told her talk about this again look I handled COVID very well yes we did a great job. Well, first of all, as I told you, it is the people of Trinidad and Tobago who made those sacrifices to keep that virus under control. He says that he did a good job, and I want to ask this. Go and ask the thousands who lost their jobs. Did he do a good job for you? Go and ask the thousands who did not get the salary of grant. Did he handle COVID well for you? Ask the thousands who didn't get their food cards. Did he do a good job for you? And in the meantime, go and ask the more than 10,000 of our citizens, man, stranded like vagrants in foreign countries. Is he, did he do a good job for you? Go and ask them. I saw the lady, um, I saw the, the video, Miss Pantin, 
crying, and I think Anil mentioned that some good Samaritan Trinidadians drove about 700 miles round trip to find and help her and take care of her. Let's give kudos to those Trinis abroad who have helped Miss Fantin. I saw another one put up a video where something happened to her family. I think there was a fire or something. And her, her son was there, her mother, and she's begging to come home. In Tobago, yes, she's begging to come home. Have a heart, Mr. Rowley. Bring our citizens home. And in the meantime, Rowley and Stuarty sitting on like Pontius Pilate saying, we're protecting you, you know. We're leaving these people out there. But guess what? Stuarty tell us 4,000 people have been granted exemptions since the shutdown to now. 4,000 people. When I asked the question the last time I spoke, and I said, tell us how many people are abroad, how many have been granted exemptions, and how many have come in exemptions since the shutdown. They didn't answer them, but a few days lately they answered. And at that time I was saying, are you bringing your cronies through the back door, your friends and your family through the back door? They're getting exemptions. 4,000 people. What about the rest of them? What is the criteria to determine Harry comes first, Mary comes second, Jean comes third? What is the criteria? Nobody knows. So you bring in 4,000 people, man. Who are these 4,000 people? We may know one or two, we see their names in the newspaper. Who are the rest of these people? I'm told somebody's daughter came with a dog, is that true? The dog got exemption too? I don't know, is it true? 4,000 you have let in, and a thousand others out there. No, sir. You will not escape with that heartlessness and shamelessness. Ask all those people who got stuck in Barbados, you remember? Thank God to a woman, Prime Minister, Mia Motley, who took pity on our nationals. Shame on us. Shame. Took pity and kept our nationals in Barbados when they couldn't open the gates here. But they opened the gate for who? Madam Delcy and crew. By the face of people, they opened the gates for them. Our students stuck in Barbados couldn't come home. Thanks to Mia Motley, who took care of them. Perhaps they're probably thinking about getting a Bajan passport now. Because the Bajans treat them even better than their own government. I want you to go and ask the when Rowley boasts how well he handled his COVID, go and ask the uh, Dobbers vendors and the small food businesses and so on, the bar owners, ask them, did Rowley do a good job handling COVID? Did he take care of you during that time? And in the meantime, while he's shutting down these little Dobbers people and the bacon shark and the corn soup people, what happened? The big food chains, they were allowed to remain open. So when somebody took out a matter to go to court, that they said shut down all. Shut down all, 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 the spitefulness. So it was okay for the big businesses, food to stay open, but you shut down numbers and corn soup and bacon shark and so on. You kept the big ones open. And when they wanted to go to court to show the discrimination, you shut down everybody. It's a kind of arrogance, hate, spite, rather than any sense of compassion or justice that they have, they have exhibited in the handling of this, uh, this COVID. And now on top of all of that, what does he do? What does he do? He says he will allow all these foreigners to come into Trinidad for CPL. So all the time you're protecting people. But hey, you're going to open up borders for CPL. What, 200, 300 people, foreigners, many foreigners. You will open our borders for them and not for our own citizens. Shame on you. And you know, somebody tell me this CPL, CPL, it means citizens preferred last. I like cricket sometimes. My husband's a great cricket fan. Many of you are. We have nothing against the cricket. But is it right to say you cannot take a chance to bring our citizens home? They're begging to come home. Babies, some old ones, some sick ones, some starving ones. Nowhere to live. No money. Separated from family, from wives, from your wife, or separated from her husband. Some little children begging to see mommy and daddy. Can't come home. Some begging, as I said, to attend a funeral. Can't come home. Not allowed to come home. But Rowley talking tough talk. And he could find it to be wise to bring cricketers from all over the world and open our borders for them. But doesn't have the heart for own citizens. Citizens preferred last in his book. Shame on you. And if that is what you call a good job on COVID, 
Heaven help us when you do a bad one. But we will not let that happen. On August 10th, I urge everyone to come out and cast your vote for the UNC. Come out on August 10th, place your X next to the rising sun. Performance over old talk, jobs over joblessness, heart over heartlessness, that is the choice you will have on August 10th. The choice is very clear. The UNC will get TNT working again. We have a vision. We have proven performance. We have a track record of performance. What matters most isn't the party card you hold, you know. What matters most is what you hold close to your heart for the better life each of you seek. You know what hard times we are facing. You know what matters most isn't red versus yellow. It is what brings out the best in harmony with all of us working together. Tonight, I put out a clarion call to all and sundry, from whichever side of the political divide, who have become disheartened and disillusioned and uh, with the arrogance and the aggression of the current government, I call on you to come and be part of a national accord to help to heal and restore Trinidad and Tobago. Those who were once a part of us, I said, welcome home. We all need to band together. The first word of our party is united, United National Congress. Let us come together united to fight the evil, wicked, incompetent Rowley government. There is room for everyone at the table in the House of the Rising Sun. Join the National Accord Initiative to heal and help. Don't complain about the things you are not willing to become and to change, become a part of the change. You know, you see all the time people complaining, complaining, complaining. Stop the complaining. We have a weapon. We have a tool to deal with all the complaints that we are getting every day, and that is on August 10th. Now is the time. Young, old, rich, poor, red, white, and black, and all the colors of the rainbow that makes up our great nation. Every shade of that rainbow in our nation. I ask you, let us come together. Let us truly become united in our bid to rescue Trinidad and Tobago from this very wicked, incompetent government. I know that we can do this together. I tell you, trust me in my heart. I trust you. See the clear choice before you and make the right choice. And the right choice cannot be Keith Rowley and the PNM. That is the worst choice. He's, um, he's bad for government. Is worst for Trinidad and Tobago. That can never be the right choice. Tonight, my friends, I say good night to you. We shall meet again. And Sunday, we will journey into the constituency of Bartara San Juan to do a walkercade, motorcade, um, keeping the social distances in mind. And on Saturday, we'll be back for the virtual to present our slate of candidates for general election 2020. May God bless and keep you safe. And may God bless Trinidad and Tobago. I thank you very much. Now is the time! No! 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 The time is no! 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 The time is no! Now is the time to put no. them out! The time is no! 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 What time it is? No! What time it is? No! What time it is? No! Now is the time for action! What time it is? No! What time it is? No! What time it is? No! Now is the time for action! Now is the time to cast your vote! Chairman of the United National Congress. I am in the constituency of Topo Sandy Grandi today with our candidate, Ms. Nabila Green, for this constituency. And right at this moment, we are actually in Grand Rivere, Nabila's hometown, 
where she was born, bred, and grew up. And we are here campaigning with her to make sure that Nabila Green becomes the next member of parliament for Topo Sandy Grandi, as well as to ensure that the United National Congress returns to government and Kamala Pasad the sister returns as Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. Hi, I am Nabila Green, your candidate for Topo Sandy Grandi. Presently, I'm in my hometown, Grand River, with my UNC family, accompanied by biological family. We are on the ground, we are working hard, we are going from house to house, reminding of my villagers, rather, of how important it is to come out and vote for election day for the representation that we desperately need. Now is the time for proper representation. Now is the time to make sure and be registered. Now is the time where 50,000 jobs will be available if you come out and vote. Now is also the time for secondary school children to have access to laptops. Now is the time. Now is time to vote for Nabila Green. Yeah. 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 Now is the time! Here we are in Akono village walking with our candidate Mr. David Nakin. This is his hometown and there are, I think there are about 197 Nakins in this village. Right now everything is looking great so far, you know, the candidate, you know, sticking up the world, you know. Right now we started the agriculture, I think up in the back of Akono there for the youths and them to bring them out, you know, get them employment. David Nakin, well, you know, David Nakin is a down-to-earth man. He's cool, he's humble, you know, he just listen, he arms open out for everyone. Yeah, David representing the youth, you know. Yes, right now we are on the great road to victory. Hi everyone, I'm your candidate for Senapuna, David Nakit, asking you to come take a look at the energy that the UNC is generating all along the East West Corridor, especially here in the constituency of Senapuna. Come out and support our economic and social transformation package, designated by our PL Kamala Prasad Bissessi. 50,000 more jobs, lower taxes, Come and join with us moving forward with unity. Hi, yes. Nice to meet you. Right? Looking forward to the support. I think we're very well here at Barataria San Juan. The energy is high, the election bell has rung, and Barataria San Juan is ready to get Trinidad and Tobago working again. Under the leadership of the Honorable Kamala Pasad Sessa as our next Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. I am Sharon Marat Garam, Shadow Council for Barataria. We have been working Barataria since last Wednesday. So far, when we are finished today, we would have completed 14 of our PDs. And the reception is exceptional. Everyone is coming out. It's basically everything. People wouldn't be coming out. They are coming out. Now will be time for the United National Congress. It's pace on the road. Now is the time.